Hi, what you're about to see in this short video is how I converted some standard four foot fluorescent lights using T5 bulbs into LED bulbs that are passed through that avoid the ballast and will save a lot of electricity. They're like these lights that you see up here on the ceiling. I have 24 of these lights. Each light has six bulbs each. So that's nearly 150 bulbs and uh, uses a lot of electricity in the fluorescent format. So I'm gonna change it to LED, which is gonna save a lot of electricity. I'll walk you through the steps of how I did it. I'm not an electrician, I'm not an expert, but for me it's pretty simple. But if you're not sure what you're doing, uh, talk to an electrician and uh, find out from an expert. But here's how I did it. So here's what a standard T5 looks like. It's uh, about 46 inches long, um, and this is a Sylvania Pentron 4100K 54 watt. On either end are these two prongs. Same thing on the other end. There you can see it there. So you, now you know what kind of bulb I have right now. Those are the lights that I need to switch out. So the first thing to do is 101 electric and turn the power off to those lights. All right, now we can work on our lights. Okay, I don't know if you can see it or not, but up there there's uh, two lights missing because I just now took them down. And you can see the wires hanging out of the ceiling. And as we pan around here, here is one of the lights. It's a four foot, standard four foot fluorescent light with six T5 bulbs in it, fluorescent bulbs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna exchange them out for the LED. You see lots of wires in there. There's a ballast and another type of ballast. I'm not sure why these have two ballasts, but um, there are two ballasts in these. And you see just a whole conglomeration of wires. So what we're going to do is now cut all of the wires where they go into the ballasts, like so. We're going to get to take some side cutters and just cut them right there, just like that, where it goes into the ballast. Then we're going to do it down here at the other end as well. Now we're going to do it down at this end. I'm going to move you around so you can see me doing it. Okay, so we're going to cut these wires at the, on the other end of the ballasts. Now just move these wires out of the way. Now I've got to do the other end as well. All right, so here is the other end of the ballast. We're gonna cut all of these wires off too. Just the wires that come out of the ballast. All right, so now we're left with all these wires. Wires on this end and wires on this end. And some of these wires we can just remove like so. These were, these were connected between these two ballasts. We won't need those anymore. All we need is the wires on one end 
that come out and the wires on the other end. The rest of this we're going to get rid of. And now we're going to take these two ballasts out. Right, so, so there's a screw on each end of the ballast, so I'm just going to take that out like that. And that will slide out. Okay, so those we can throw away. We don't need them anymore. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to straighten all of these wires that are left. There's the ground wire. We're going to keep it separate. And now we're going to straighten out all of these wires. And what we're going to do is we're going to reduce all of these on one end to one wire and all of them on the other end to one wire as well. All right, here's some standard electrical tape. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all the wires on one end. I'm going to just twist them a little bit just so they're kind of uniform. And then I'm going to take some tape and I'm going to wrap it around here just to kind of make it look a little nicer and keep it in order. And I'll show you something very important. I'm going to take this tape and I'm going to wrap it over so that it leaves a little nub on there. That's always nice for later if you have to change something on electrical. Anytime you use electrical tape, if you do that, you'll save yourself time later. This is just my OCD come through. I like things to be orderly. And um, so we'll do that. Now, this is the whole where the wires came in from the ceiling. There's a black wire and a white wire and a ground wire. The ground wire hooks to that, the green. And the black is going to hook to one of these and the white is going to hook to the other one. So this is where they come through. So we don't need it this long. So I'm going to cut it off about right there. And what I want to do is I want to cut them all the same length. And these right here, we can get rid of those. Now this one is coming from the other end. And we're going to have to run another wire down to here where it's going to tie in with our electric. So we've got to cut all of these the same length as well, just like we did on the others. Just like that. All right, now that we've got all of these reduced to two different lines, one line over here, one line over here, we're going to use a wire snip and we're going to remove about five-eighths of an inch off of each one of these strands because we're going to tie them together here in a minute. Now we need to strip the wires from this end, strip all of these so that they're also nice and clean, about five-eighths of an inch from the end. The reason I do it a little bit longer, you probably don't need five-eighths of an inch, but um, it allows me to trim off a little bit at the end and get make sure they're absolutely all the same length. So that's why I do it a little bit longer. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to get them all as close as I can. And even though I've done my best to keep them all the same length, these have moved a little bit from the way they were twisted, and so they're not quite square on the end. And so I'm going to cut the longest ones so that they are all pretty close to perfect. All right, so now we take this black, and we're going to just hold it on there even with the others and put a twist on this end just like we did with the other end. Didn't quite get those squared in the hole properly. Okay, there that goes better. So I'm going to just twist this till we get a nice 
till I feel the threads getting a good bite on all of them. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to take some tape and I'm going to put on here and tape around these so that these cannot move. Once they're in place, they're going to stay in place. And we'll just go around here and put a nice bead on this. Now, a lot of modern, a lot of modern electricians don't do this anymore. They just put the wing, the wing nut on there and close it in, and um, that's good enough for them. But me, I'm old school. It's the way I was taught, and I still do it this way. So now I'm going to bend this wire like so. I think I'll just put another, one more on there so that it's on there nice and snug. The last thing we do is put that nice little quarter inch piece on there so that this will easily pull off later if, when, we, when we need to. All right, there we go. Here, we hooked a black wire onto this end over here, so now I'm gonna hook a white wire onto all of these. I wouldn't have to, I could put white and white, it would not matter, but I'm just so ingrained with a black and a white wire that I'm gonna use one black and one white. All right, so that is on there nice and snug now. So we've effectively taken all of these wires and hooked it into this white wire. And now I'm going to tape this up nice and snug so that these wires are not going to want to move. I should tell you uh, about that lid that goes on there. probably couldn't see it when I was taking this down but one of these goes over top of that and in order to get the lights unhooked up in the ceiling I had to take this this off up in the ceiling so I'm not going to put this back on until uh, we hook them up in the ceiling but when we do all you have to do is this just slides over there's different versions some have a screw at the end some have a screw in the middle this one has a screw in the middle so you just hook it on one side, push in the metal a little bit, and it'll snap into place. Then you run those two screws back in, and you're done. That's after you hook this up. So while I've, while I've got this down, I'm going to wipe these reflectors off a little bit, because they, they get dust and dirt on them over a period of time. I'm not going to clean the whole thing up, but I'll just clean up the outside and the most noticeable. But these reflectors, if they get dusty and dirty, they're not going to put out as much light. So, you know, getting to be an old man like I am, I need all the light I can get sometimes. So, now they're nice and clean, kind of almost like new. And um, all I need to, do, need to do now is hook in the LED bulbs, put them back up there, hook it up, and we're in business. All right, here are the brand new LEDs. Take them out. So what we're going to do is just slide this in on either end and twist it. And the only thing that I would note is, which it seems to be pretty obvious, but you want the writing on here to be down. Otherwise, it would, it would obstruct the light when it's coming down towards you. So make sure those are down. <clears throat> And that's all there is to it. Just cut all the wires on one end of even length, all the wires on the other end of even length, then hook a new wire with a connected here with a wire connector so that you end up with two wires down here plus your ground, your green ground. And you're ready, this light is done and ready to hook up.
All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the power on, on and see if the one side works. I've only hooked up the one side so far, but let's just see if it works. All right, so we do have power, but I'm gonna walk you over here and you'll see that one of the bulbs is not turning on. I don't know if you can see that or not. We'll hone in here. All right, so that middle bulb on the left side is not working. My guess is most likely the bulb just needs to be adjusted in the track, so we'll try that first. All right, so I'm gonna climb back up there and see if I can get that bulb to work. Okay, I think I've got a bad LED bulb because this is wandering a little bit on one end, this end right here. This, this bulb has been damaged, I think. And um, when I got my bulbs, one of the four boxes was damaged and several of the bulbs were broken and damaged and I had to re actually send them back. And um, I think this is one that's damaged as well. So we're gonna replace this bulb and see what happens. All right, so I looked in my stash and I'm down to my last bulb. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steal one from that, the other side, the other, the other unit that I put up there, I'm going to steal one of those bulbs and try one of those bulbs and see if it works. Okay. Okay, so I did have a bad bulb, and I will tell you, um, I should have tested these all before I took them up. I have tested all the rest of them that I've put up, and this was the first one that I put up without testing. Um, there's a message there for all of us. Okay, I think that about does it. Um, I know there's lots of YouTubes out there on converting LEDs, but I had not seen one specifically that uh, talked about converting a six bulb T5. There may be, but I just didn't find one. So I thought I'd do one uh, just for the benefit of somebody else. So I hope that helps and I think that's a wrap. So this is the advertisement that is on Amazon showing the kind of bulbs I got and the kind of bulbs I used. Be warned that you need to make sure before you do any kind of conversion on your own, that you have the right kind of bulbs, the right kind of LED bulbs. Some bulbs um, require that the ballast remain in. It's just, you just take out the old fluorescent and plug in the new LED. And so if you took out the ballast and started cutting wires and so on, uh, you would be in uh, dire straits at that point and have to replace everything. Bottom of the line, if you're not sure what you're do doing, uh, contact your local electrician and get it done right. In case someone might be interested, here is a picture of the LED boxes that I got. There were 30 LEDs in each one of these boxes, and the one at the right was severely damaged and had a numerous uh, broken bulbs in it. And you can see the breaks in the box and all that kind of thing. I, I don't blame the, the uh, seller, New Watt. I'm sure it was a disgruntled or, or uninterested um, worker at uh, the shipper. And I forget who shipped this to me, whether it was UPS or uh, U.S. Mail. I think it was U.S. Ground. Anyway, I had a severely damaged box and ran into some problems with some broken bulbs. As far as NuWatt is concerned, I'm very happy with uh, the product and I, and I don't envision any problem with that.